Hello everyone, welcome back to another video packed with 15 more secrets and easter eggs from the Gran Turismo series of video games. As always, I hope you enjoy the video, and if you do want to see more like this, please consider leaving a like and even subscribing to the channel. Thanks. Okay, let's get stuck in. First up today is Gran Turismo 4 with an easter egg that was discovered just last year. It's funny to think that before GT7, Gran Turismo didn't really have a reputation for easter eggs, but it turns out that we just didn't find half of them until like 20 years later. Anyway, this easter egg can be found on Chamonix. If you drive to this point on the circuit, and you can see where I am on the minimap, and look outside the boundaries of the track, you can see a yeti among the trees. This discovery was originally made by Nenkai and the Animeister, I believe two of the most notable Gran Turismo modders who we've thanked on the channel many times before. They found the Yeti texture in the game's files and it was Submaniac93 who did the hard work of looking around to actually find it in situ. Using the Gran Turismo Master mod for Gran Turismo 5 to A access Chamonix and B use the free cam, we can get a better look at the abominable snowman. He actually appears to be a Wampa from Star Wars, which appears near the beginning of The Empire Strikes Back. Honestly, it seems like they actually just stole the texture straight from the movie. The last thing to mention on this topic is from an old thread on GT Planet, where people were discussing the monkey easter egg on Trial Mountain, something I've shown on the channel before. A user named SBR too low for me jokingly said, what next? A yeti walking by on Chamonix? Or a Bigfoot running across the track on Cathedral Rock? And 20 years later this prophecy would actually become true. So just Bigfoot to find now, right? We continue our adventure at Monza. As we've seen in previous videos, we can use the free cam from the Gran Turismo 5 Master Mod to take the camera out of bounds and look at things we couldn't usually see. If we take the camera way down below the level, and descend into this black abyss, we can find something curious down here. It's this odd black cube. In fact, this is likely to be something called a dev cube. Now, I'm not a developer myself, so I'm probably not going to do this explanation justice. But dev cubes usually act as reference points for other objects, and they're usually only in use while the game is being made. By the time the game is released, they're either made invisible or placed outside the playable area, like we can see here, so the player can never see them. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if there was one on every circuit on the game. Sticking with GT5, let's head back to Fuji, the scene of two secrets from the last video I released. I'll leave a link to the playlist of all the episodes in the video's description, should you want to go back and check them out. Anyway, so we want to go beyond the final corner this time, way over to a small set of buildings over here. Buildings that you can barely see from the circuit itself. What's interesting about this is that on one of the buildings, we can see this collection of textures which seem quite out of place. Actually, they seem to be a group of textures that are used on the buildings in this area. The first thing to note is that they're all upside down on the building here, so let's flip them around. Okay, so the blue roof texture can be seen on this building here. And this roof texture can be found over here. Okay, then we have this building here. And also this one with several windows. Then there's this terracotta coloured roof texture which can be seen here. And finally this building texture, where I think you can actually see part of someone's van. Maybe a Daihatsu Hijet or something. In the last episode, we looked at this little cat that appears on Tokyo Route 246 on Gran Turismo 4. But does this little guy feature on the PS3 era Gran Turismo games as well? The short answer is no. The cat did not cross over to the next gen consoles along with the circuit. On Gran Turismo 6, however, there is another creature that can be seen on the same stretch of wall, just before where the cat was sitting and it's this small squirrel here. It's 
quite easy to miss as it's only small and I found that the squirrel was actually obscured by the traffic light pole from certain angles. What I also find interesting about this guy is that he appears to be absent from Gran Turismo 5. I was under the impression that Tokyo Route 246 on Gran Turismo 6 was a carbon copy of the version of the track on GT5, but there is at least this one little addition. Here's something that I previously mentioned in my Monza Out of Bounds video. You can find a link to that video in the description as well. If we take the free camp behind the grandstand, we can find a unique scenery car that doesn't show up anywhere else to my knowledge. Now there are several different scenery cars that tend to get reused across the game's circuits, and they've all been rounded up by the GT Fandom website where their real life car identities are all revealed. And guess what? The vehicle that we're about to see isn't even mentioned here. Like they're confirming that it's completely obscured from view even when using the regular photo mode camera. Anyway, the hidden vehicle is a bus, owned by a company called CEA Estinori. They're the people who are responsible for fire safety at the circuit, at least at the time of the game's release. So there we go, a previously undiscovered scenery car. Speaking of scenery, let's head back to Tokyo Route 246 again. Not for the first time in this series or this episode in fact. This time we're on the start finish straight before we get to the first corner of the circuit. If we look to the left we can see a car showroom in the scenery, but that's certainly not all. We can actually see a couple of cars in the window that have never been featured in a Gran Turismo game to date. The first is the Bentley Continental GT, which you can see here. The second vehicle is slightly harder to see, but it appears to be a Bentley Arnage. Again, another vehicle we've never seen or been able to drive on Gran Turismo. There's also a Maserati Gran Turismo 2, which does appear on the games, from GT5 to GT7. Now we look at a seldom used mission on Gran Turismo 6, Luna 1 something that hasn't been featured in this series so far. Okay, what we need to do here is, in photo mode, look behind the Lunar Rover and locate the constellation of Orion's Belt. That's those three stars in a row up there. If we zoom in, we can see Orion's Nebula, a beautiful astronomical feature, which you can only see in photo mode. The cameras in normal gameplay don't allow you to see high enough in the sky to see the nebula so the only way to see it is to get your camera out and search the galaxy. Silverstone was a circuit that made its debut on Gran Turismo 6, and it seems as though Polyphony Digital wanted to put their own mark on the renowned track. If you drive until you reach this section of the track, you can spot some members of the crowd that don't look quite like the others. Usually, the members of the crowd in Gran Turismo aren't doing anything particularly special, they're just watching the racing, of course. But then you have these guys breaking the fourth wall by posing for the camera. Now we can't say for sure, but the consensus is that they are likely to be three of the game's developers. It could even be some members of the team who went to photograph Silverstone, in preparation for recreating it in the game. Maybe one day, we can say exactly who they are. Now we take a quick stop off at Gran Turismo Sport before moving on to GT7. Well, technically, we take a look at the Gran Turismo Sport closed beta, which was released prior to the full game to a select few people who were lucky enough to gain access. And guess who was lucky enough to be granted access? That's right, yours truly. If you were also one of the lucky ones, or you just watched some footage online, perhaps you witnessed some gameplay of the Lotus Evora. This is a car that featured on the closed beta of GT Sport, but was absent from the full game. It's been reported that the removal of the Evora was due to licensing issues, but it was already featured on Gran Turismo 5 and 6, so it's a strange one. But whatever the reason, the Evora has never returned to Gran Turismo to date. We've previously seen some of the wildlife at Trial Mountain, the monkey in the tree, and of course, Nessie. But on Gran Turismo 7, there is a third animal to spot while you're touring the circuit. On the long back straight, get your eyes peeled by the time you exit the tunnel. And you might spot the bear here, just outside the track. To be honest, you might have a better shot of seeing it if you drove the track in reverse. 
Also, the game's devs have put a wildlife crossing sign right about here as well. Hopefully the bear stays where it is for the duration of the race. This fictional snowy circuit of Lake Louise was added to GT7 in the 1.4 update, which is located in Canada's Banff National Park. If you drive about halfway around the tri-oval version of the track to the Lake Louise sign that goes over the course, you can spot a little easter egg. Looking at the Lake Louise sign, head to the right and just outside the track, you can see that someone has made a snowman. Ok, we head over to Special Stage Route X now. This track first featured on Gran Turismo 5 as DLC, but it was only on GT Sport that an airfield was introduced to the track's scenery. Naturally, the airfield also featured on Gran Turismo 7, but with one very important addition. And it's this rather large plane here. The Antonov An-25 Murya, which was recognised as being one of the largest aircraft in the world. Sadly though, it was destroyed only a few days before the game's release, during the war between Ukraine and Russia. Still, it lives on here at Special Stage Route X forever. Grand Valley finally reappeared on Gran Turismo 7, after having been absent from GT Sport. However, the circuit that we loved has been drastically changed. Well, to be specific, the layout of the track is pretty much the same but it's now set in the Big Sur region of California. And with that change comes the wildlife. At a couple of points around Grand Valley, you can see birds of prey. I believe they're California condors. Big Sur is a favoured roosting place for the California condor, which is actually quite a rare and endangered species. Look out for these birds of prey next time you're lapping Grand Valley. And that's not the only bird of prey that you can see on GT7. Let's head back to Fuji Speedway once more, home to two secrets that we discovered in the previous episode in this series. When you're heading down towards Dunlop Corner, you might see a bird of prey hovering above the circuit. Again, let's go into photo mode to get a better look. While Big Sur is a famous roosting place of the California condor, I'm not aware of Fuji having a similar affiliation with a particular bird of prey. I've seen people online calling it a hawk, but after a bit of my own research, I think that it could potentially be a black kite. They're one of the most common birds of prey in Japan in general, and photos of this bird do look similar to the one in the game. Still, the jury's out on this one, so let me know in the comments if you recognise this species. And why stop there with the animal themed easter eggs and secrets? We've already seen a hidden cat earlier in this video. But what if I told you that there was another one hiding somewhere? Not on Tokyo, but on Mount Panorama. Coming down to the final corner, there's an escape road that goes off to the right, while the actual track goes round to the left. We have actually featured this road in a couple of previous videos in this series, once for an easter egg in GT6 and another for this reason here. The National Motor Museum, which you can still see on GT7 of course. But we're not here to discuss that. If we park closely to the barricades at the end of this little road, we can actually see a cat right on the other side of the barrier. The fact that it's so close to the barrier means that it's really difficult to spot. You have to be right up against it to see the cat. And there we go, that was another 15 easter eggs and secrets from the Gran Turismo series. I hope you enjoyed the video, and check out the rest of the series if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.